got another DLP TV here. Something's horribly wrong with this one. A horrible noise, uh, probably from the color wheel. Let's uh, see if we can uh, see what this is like inside. Looks like this one has the uh, mirrors at uh, 45 degrees, so we have little diamond shapes instead of squares. Given how beat up this thing is, I think this I'm just going to scrap this. It's not really worth fixing, but there should be some useful stuff inside it. Okay, this one is different in that the front comes off rather than the back. All the electronics are out of that now, right over here. And as usual, it's horribly, horribly dirty. What are these people doing to these TVs to get them so dirty? Let's start digging into this thing. Oh, and uh, here's the lamp. As you can see some frost on the that side, of this left side of the bulb, which is the top. This one is probably near the end of its life. Here's the entire optical unit, much simpler than, uh, or one, or much more one piece than the other unit I took apart before. I can hear glass or something in here, so I do suspect that one of the segments has flown off the color wheel. Let's uh, dig into this and see what's in there. Oh yes, one of the segments must have flown off the color wheel and shattered. Let's see all the fragments in there. And yep, there's the. Uh, huh. Oh wow, we lost half the wheel there. <laughs> well, this is never going to run again. This color wheel is a bit odd in that it has uh, blue, cyan, and red sections. You normally have red, green, and blue. This one has cyan for some reason. And I think there was green in the broken part. There's a, little, there's a little sliver of green if you can just see it around here. I suspect the cyan may be to get some extra light through because cyan is basically uh, blue and green. Looks like this also had a yellow filter. So it looks like they have um, three primary additive and subtractive colors. Looks like it probably threw this segment first, and I'm guessing the debris from that segment after it crashed into the wall uh, hit the other mirrors and caused them to break. If you look in the uh, back of this up here, you can see the lots of little dings in the aluminum where the mirrors hit, or the filters hit. I was just pulling this motor apart, and it has a very interesting bearing setup. It's basically two, uh, looks like almost white ceramic pieces, and the coil is interesting as well. It's built sort of uh, as a sort of a waves of wire, three, three waves for the three phases. I've never seen a motor built quite like this before. Ooh, got an interesting effect in this uh, optics here. This is uh, just a lens in front of this integrating uh, tube. It's basically mirrored surfaces on all four sides, and a lens at the focal point, uh, focused at the uh, fo tip there. So we get this sort of fly's eye effect, but every second one is mirrored. And we have this other lens that goes on it as well. Sort of, sort of looks like the fly's eye lens you'd see in a uh, LCD projector. I guess this is just sort of effectively another way of doing it. <laughs> I like the cartoony sound when you pull this apart. And now we can see the DMD chip in there. I just pulled this cover off, and something unexpected in here. It's some sort of uh, mechanical uh, thing in the optical path. Um, let's see, just a couple little magnets and coils can change the angle of this plate slightly. I'm not quite sure what this is supposed to do. Perhaps this is something that oscillates back and forth quickly and uh, moves the image up and down slightly. That would perhaps have some sort of a uh, blurring or um, anti-aliasing effect, so you couldn't see the pixels. Here's a close-up of the DMD chip. And here's the rest of the control board. Um, big DL, uh, 
Texas Instruments Custom ASIC, some more DLP branded chips, some weird BGA package that I haven't seen before. It looks like a RAM chip, but the top looks different. Most certainly RAM though. Flash. I like how they're using a standard DVI connector to get the video to it. And it looks like this was designed in uh, early 2006. Some nice bypassing around all those BGA chips and nice gold plating for the uh, DL DMD connector. Yeah, it's little pads, LGA with this little adapter thing that connects them to the to those pads. And this thing must just hold the DMD in the right place. fisheye lens. It doesn't really do anything on there. Oh, well, it makes it wider. Just a single lens in there and a mirror, and another lens that has focus control. Yep, nothing too special there. Slightly uh, non-round uh, aperture in there, for some reason. And this thing just has the special prism block that gets the light onto the at the right angle onto the DLP and a mirror to bounce it up which has some trimming screws to trim the angle. It's not too much interesting on this board. Uh, there was this plug-in module for the probably some video processing. Um, big LG custom part, bunch of RAM, flash, uh, Samsung ARM CPU, Max PLD, um, and you see something, this must be the HDMI uh, receiver. This is a LG VSB cam receiver, and not much else on the other side. And there's some big BGA part that is not populated, and if you look at the pads, most of them are completely unconnected. Curious as to what that uh, would have been. Let's have a play around with this uh, optical device. Uh, I've got the signal generator hooked up to an audio amplifier. Let's see what this thing will do. That's 20 hertz, taking only about 2 volts peak to do that. Let's try higher frequency. Seems to sort of resonate around 60 hertz, perhaps. The only real purpose I can see for this thing is to uh, effectively shift the image up and down slightly to act as a um, way to remove the screen door effects, because if you moved it up and down a bit, the little black lines between pixels would be moved and they would be less visible. Let's see what frequency we can get this thing up to at full deflection. Let's try 100 hertz. Okay, it's full deflection. It's about six volts. There's about 200 hertz. Get rid of that offset. It's 
starting to get hot there. About 300, almost 400 hertz. No, not getting much anymore. <laughs> Let's just see if there's any noticeable effect if we aim the camera through it. That's a very slight shift noticeable. That would be amplified greatly because the uh, focal length is so short between the lens and the uh, DMD. I hope you found this TV teardown interesting. Thanks for watching.